The subcommittee will now come to order. Today, the subcommittee will consider the committee print on the Motor Vehicle Safety Act of 2010. Uh, with that said, the chair now uh, will recognize himself for five minutes for the purposes of opening statement. The focus of today's markup is the Motor Vehicle Safety Act of 2010 committee print. We recently released a draft legislation which is designed to strengthen NHTSA's ability to move effectively and proactively to fulfill its core mission. And I want to take a moment out to commend the chairman of the full committee, Mr. Waxman, for his leadership on this issue. And I also want to commend the Chairman Emeritus, John Dingle, for his substantive contributions as we work together to develop this uh, important legislation. Our common objective is to assure the safety of every American who gets behind the wheel of a car. While we can't control a driver's behavior, literally, I think it is within our ability to put into place a strong and clear set of regulations that all of manufacturers must abide by. The committee print that is before you this afternoon is the product of a series of extensive consultations, occasional disagreements, but always, and I want to emphasize always, always constructive engagement between the leadership and staff of the subcommittee as well as by the automobile manufacturers, both domestic and foreign, and the consumer groups. And I want to thank all of you for your contributions to this important process, which I know is of vital importance to the American people. My hope is that we will continue that constructive dialogue today in a bipartisan fashion. And having said that, this is what this bill will do and what it will not do. First, it will equip NHTSA with more expertise, more technology, allowing the agents to hire and train more engineers. And I'm glad that with the inclusion of the Center Honors Program, a greater outreach will be made to the best students of the community colleges and those colleges and universities that serve minority students. Second, it will restore and enhance and sustain a cutting edge data source that will better ensure public safety well into the 21st century. NHTSA will do so via the National Automobile Sampling System, NADS, a system that improves the data collection of police reports crashes that occur on U.S. roads that diagnose, uh, diagnosis safety problems, that identifies safety defects and non-compliance with, sa with safety standards, and that evaluates the degree to which its standards and programs are achieving their goals and that can be improved. It's worth noting that car crashes are the number one cause of death for children. Increasing knowledge of the nature of crash injuries with input from interested parties like suppliers, safety advocates, the medical community, and research organizations will help reduce the risk of crashes and save more lives. A third important provision is that this legislation promotes safety and innovation by setting up standards that better protect consumers. Fourth. It increases transparency by requiring disclosure of more safety information to consumers and mandating that NHTSA make its safety, vehicle safety databases more accessible. Fifth, it is, protects our automobile industry while it continues to recover from the economic downturn. At the same time, this is what the bill and this proposal will not do. It does not contain any enforcement mechanism as initially offered by the, in the previous draft. This legislation 
includes no civil penalty and no imminent hazard authority. You might ask why. While these two provisions are very important, they have to be seriously reconsidered, especially the process and criteria provided in the initial draft for exercising the imminent hazard authority. Before I give back my time, I want to again thank the members and staff for their hard work. I'm urging members to limit their amendments to the motor vehicle safety provision. We need to hear from all members, and for that, I'm inviting you to respect your time limit. I, like everyone else assembled here, I'm looking forward to hearing from every member who wants to be heard. Thank you, and I, with that, I yield back the balance of my time. And I recognize now the ranking member of the subcommittee, Mr. Whitfield, for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, we certainly welcome the opportunity to discuss this new committee print uh, of this uh, reauthorization of NHTSA. I might say that during the hearings we held on this important subject matter, uh, which came about as a result of some of the Toyota issues, the ad administrator of NHTSA made it quite clear in his testimony before uh, our subcommittee and and in even hearings over oversight and investigation that he believed that the resources of NHTSA today were basically adequate uh, to meet the needs of this situation. I would also point out, uh, and this came out in our committee hearings as well, that right now we are in the safest period in automobile history. NHTSA's latest report reveals the lowest fatality rate on record at 1.16 fatalities per 100 million vehicle miles traveled. 30 years ago, that rate, by the way, was 3.34 fatalities, and we have nearly double the amount of cars on the road traveling roughly two-thirds more miles per year. Now, we all recognize that any death is too many, but I do think it's important that right now we do have the safest record that we've had in the history of this country. And we welcome the opportunity as we move forward uh, to the full committee uh, to have an opportunity to explore our differences on this important issue. I know that uh, uh, Chairman Waxman and our ranking member Barton have had some meetings and we look forward to working with you as we move forward, but we do want to make very clear of what our concerns are. Uh, for example, the authorization level in this committee print over a few years basically doubles the budget of NHTSA. And at a time when we have a serious uh, deficit and debt in this country, and when we are trying to address other major issues, uh, spending and discipline in spending becomes even more important in my view. There is also in the committee print a significant user fee on all automobiles certified for sale, uh, whether they're made in this country or elsewhere. And that would be money available to NHTSA in addition to uh, the authorization that's provided in the committee print. I do commend uh, the majority for at least removing the provision on civil penalties, which in the original bill was unlimited. Uh, that has now been taken out, and uh, Chairman Rush, you've indicated you're willing to work with us as we move forward on that issue. Uh, certainly, I don't think there's a lot of opposition, and we do believe that the Center for Vehicle uh, Electronics and Emerging Technologies is something that would be useful uh, for all of us, and so that's an issue that uh, we, we feel quite comfortable with. Uh, we do have concerns about appealing, for example, defect petition rejections. Uh, we feel, uh, we, I personally have some concerns about the uh, language in this committee print that would create new categories of information that must be made available to the public. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with being made available to the public, but we've had some civil uh, cases looking at specific issues relating to this, and we always have to be aware 
of trial lawyers having access to information for the simple purpose of gathering information to bring lawsuits. So, and then I might also say that the electronic data recorder does raise significant amount of privacy issues. And uh, so these are some of the issues that uh, many of us on our side of the aisle is concerned about. Uh, we all have the same commitment and the dedication to make our highways and our automobiles as safe as they can be. Uh, but I do w uh, thank the chairman uh, for extending a hand of uh, bipartisanship, and we look forward to working with you as we move forward on this legislation. The chair now recognizes the chairman of the full committee, Mr. Waxman, for five minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Rush, for convening this markup today. We've worked together to develop this legislation. I'm pleased it's before the subcommittee. This act is important because it has a potential to dr dramatically improve vehicle safety into the future. And we've seen the reasons for this. We even had a hearing in the Oversight Committee today on the Toyota question. Thousands of complaints of sudden unintended acceleration but never thoroughly uh, uh, investigated the possible causes. And the NHTSA, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, is the agency charged with protecting the public they had plenty of evidence that there was a problem, but they lacked the expertise, the resources, and the will to force a recall. The legislation before us today will address many of these problems. It can't give the agency more political will, but it can increase its resources and capacity and provide the agency with the tools that it needs. The bill has three components. First, it improves the electronics expertise at NHTSA and calls for new safety standards that would prevent or mitigate sudden acceleration. Uh, new vehicles would be required to be equipped with robust event data recorders to assist defect investigators in accident reconstruction. Secondly, it creates additional transparency and, and accountability by increasing public access to NHTSA data and restoring judicial oversight of agency decisions to deny a defect petition. And thirdly, the bill addresses the agency's resource deficiency with an increased authorization of appropriations and the introduction of a modest user fee. The legislation we're considering today does not include uh, two provisions that were in the original draft. First increases maximum civil penalties. The second uh, provides NHTSA with the authority to quickly recall cars that pose an imminent hazard to the driving public. I consider these important provisions and I hope that we can work out an agreement on what those provisions will be when we add them back uh, into, the, uh, into the legislation at the full committee. And I look forward to working with Chairman Rush and Chairman Dingell, uh, Chairman Barton, and, uh, and all the members that have a, a special interest in this, uh, in this particular area. I want to thank you, Chairman Rush and Chairman Dingell, for your contributions to the legislation. We've worked closely together, and I'm pleased that we've struck agreement on so many provisions, and I'm hopeful that uh, Chairman Dingell will be able to support the bill throughout the legislative process. I want to thank Ranking Member Barton. We started out discussions with Mr. Barton's staff in early April. Since then, his staff has suggested many helpful changes in the bill, which we've incorporated. In some areas, I t have had to limit the, uh, my own aspirations for this legislation, and it did so because we have a rare opportunity to achieve consensus on truly important vehicle safety reforms and enact landmark legislation this year. Uh, I hope we will continue to work on this uh, after the subcommittee acts. We'll have time before we get to full committee to explore other areas uh, where we can um, reach a consensus and I hope uh, a, a complete consensus on the le legislation. I'm going to certainly do the best I can to help us achieve that goal. And I know, Mr. Chairman, that's your objective as well. Yield back by time. I want to thank the Chairman of the full committee uh, for those remarks and look forward to working with you. Uh, the Chair now recognizes the ranking member of the full committee, Mr. Barton, for five minutes. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not going to take five minutes. I want to echo what um, Ranking Member Whitfield said in his opening statement. Um, the Republicans are definitely... Uh, willing to work with our friends on the majority side to reauthorize uh, 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 NHTSA 
and to uh, try to get a good bill out of the uh, what is called this year the Motor Vehicle Safety Act. Um, Chairman Waxman, I had a meeting earlier today, which he asked uh, uh, if we would be willing to uh, forego some of the amendments today in this markup in exchange for a, uh, an agreement to work in a good faith effort between this markup and full committee uh, to come to a bipartisan agreement on a bill that both sides uh, should be able to support. Um, I agree with that premise and have asked my uh, members on the minority side uh, to uh, offer and then withdraw a number of amendments so that they can highlight issues they're concerned about but not to uh, uh, engage in a protracted debate or a series of roll call votes. So today we want to uh, uh, highlight issues that we think need to be addressed and then work with Chairman Rush and Chairman Waxman and other members of the majority uh, in a bipartisan basis to hold a markup sometime in the next uh, several weeks or, or maybe the next month. Um, issues that I think should be put on the table at this markup, uh, the imposition of uh, a new tax on cars sold in America. Um, it may not sound like much, but $3 a vehicle escalating to $9 a vehicle if and when the uh, automobile industry does get back on its feet, uh, that can generate uh, substantial revenue. Uh, it is a tax. It is not a user fee. The whole purpose of NHTSA uh, is, is uh, automobile safety or transportation safety. We ought to be able to authorize in this committee and appropriate in the Appropriations Committee sufficient funds. We have concerns about some of the standards. Uh, revision of some of the existing standards and in some cases creation of new standards. Uh, as Ranking Member Whitfield said, we have a concern about the doubling of the NHTSA budget in three years or the authorization to double it. Um, there's no indication where that money is going to come from. We have some concerns about confidentiality and then we have a concern about a requirement in the draft of the bill that would set standards for which employees could be hired from which universities. Um, we believe that uh, we ought to let the merit reign and the best young men and women be hired based on their merit and not where they happen to uh, uh, have matriculated. So, Mr. Chairman, in the spirit of good faith and bipartisanship, we will, we will make several uh, amendments in order today to at least begin the debate, but we do not plan on uh, having a protracted markup today. With that, I yield back. The Chair thanks the gentleman and the Chair Holmes. Uh, peace in the Valley to all those who are gathered here. Uh, peace in the Valley. Uh, the Chair now recognizes the gentlelady from Illinois, uh, Ms. Schakowsky, for two minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, uh, for, for holding this markup. I commend you and uh, Mr. Waxman for your work and Mr. Barton, uh, Mr. Dingell on this important bill, the Motor Vehicle Safety Act. This subcommittee and the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee uh, have held a number of hearings this year in response to the high-profile recalls of Toyota vehicles that have experienced sudden unintended acceleration. In fact, the ONI subcommittee just held uh, uh, another hearing that ended shortly, uh, just a little while ago. In our uh, discussions, we heard reports that since 2000, there have been more than 2,600 complaints about unintended acceleration in Toyota vehicles and possible links to 34 deaths. To me, that raises serious questions about whether the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has sufficient resources, including authority, funding, personnel, and expertise to meet its safety mandates. In one of our hearings, I asked our witness about NHTSA's resources, and what we heard back was, one, the need for an increase in funding, increased transparency in terms of data, three, increased uh, data captured by cars, black boxes that could be analyzed by safety investigators like NHTSA. The Motor Vehicle Safety Act addresses each of those issues by increased authority funding for NHTSA and creating a small user fee to fund the agency, changing transparency requirements to make more consumer complaints available to the public, and requiring all vehicles to be equipped with event data recorders. It also includes the common sense requirement that when a driver presses the brake, 
Even if the throttle is fully open, the car will stop. Those changes will save lives, and I look forward to working with my colleagues to move this important legislation forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. <clears throat> the chair now recognizes the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Gringery, uh, for two minutes. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for calling uh, today's markup on the committee print of the Motor Vehicle Safety Act of 2010. Ultimately, I believe we all agree that it is absolutely imperative to ensure the safety of consumers in the vehicle that they have purchased. As a member of this subcommittee and the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee, right. I've had the ability to participate in hearings designed to address the particular problems with sudden unintended acceleration that have occurred within Toyota vehicles. Within those hearings, these two subcommittees have also examined the role that the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, has played to ensure motorist safety as a result of these problems. Mr. Chairman, as was mentioned previously, just this morning, uh, the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee held another hearing on this very issue. The goal of this hearing, as stated in the majority's hearing memo, was to examine whether Toyota and NHTSA had taken adequate steps since the February hearing to investigate and understand the role of electronics in this uh, issue of sudden unintended acceleration. With this in mind, it is clear that we are still trying to properly ascertain the root cause of the problem experienced by consumers. Mr. Chairman, if this morning's hearing was to, quote, investigate and understand, unquote, issues surrounding vehicle safety, I have concerns regarding the committee print of this legislation. As a physician, I knew well the priority of diagnosing health problems before treating them. With the bill we have before the subcommittee today, I feel that we are trying to act quickly to get to a legislative fix before we fully understand the nature of the problem before us. To that end, I understand the desire to act quickly to address the underlying problems experienced by both Toyota and NHTSA to ensure vehicle safety. However, we should be focused on developing legislation to act correctly rather than simply act quickly. So, Mr. Chairman, I hope all the subcommittee members will keep this important point in mind as we debate and amend the committee print of the Motor Vehicle Safety Act of 2010 today. I do look forward to a spirited debate, and I yield back the balance of my time. The chair recognizes Mr. Sarbanes for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I um, look forward to our continued progress on the Motor Vehicle Safety Act of 2010. Uh, there's a collaborative dynamic between the government and the private sector in this country where the private sector is the one that innovates, that's on the cutting edge, sort of leads us to new frontiers. Uh, but the government's got to be there to make sure there's a good framework in place, that there's guidelines, that there's rules of the road. The government's ability to do that depends on its expertise that resides inside of these various agencies. And much of what we're trying to achieve here is to make sure that that expertise is there and that the resources are there to support it. And I'm particularly pleased that this Center for Vehicle Electronics and Emerging Technologies uh, within NHTSA is part of the legislation because that's an area where we really, the government really needs to keep up. The agency has to keep up to make sure that the, the right kind of safety standards uh, are in place. Uh, there's many other important pieces of the legislation, and um, I look forward to us moving forward with it. Thank you. Yield back. <coughs> The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Stearns. And, Mr. Stearns, let me just add, I want to give you a uh, commend you and thank you so much for your input into this uh, piece of legislation and thank you for your involvement and your engagement. The chair recognizes Mr. Stearns for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, let me uh, thank you for having this hearing. And I think all of us in this room obviously support uh, and want to protect consumers and ensure that the uh, NHTSA has the ability and resources to do their job. Um, I think since the legislative hearing, we've seen some changes, and I can understand that. Sometimes between a legislative hearing and a markup, there's some changes. Uh, issues come up. Uh, Mr. Barton, uh, the ranking member, mentioned the increase from $9 per vehicle within three-year period. Uh, we perhaps many of us think that might be a little excessive. Uh, and then I think Mr. Whitfield, the ranking member, mentioned the privacy issue dealing with the event data recorder. Um, but I would say to all my colleagues, uh, in, especially in light of Mr. Whitfield's comment about the increased safety uh, 
uh, fatalities and things that he mentioned in his opening statement, uh, we are increasing the budget under this authorization dramatically. Uh, I believe they're now having about $133 million is what their budget is today. We want to move it under uh, this bill up to $200 million in 2011, to $240 million in 2012, and in 2013 to $280 million. So, my colleagues, that is uh, literally doubling, more than doubling, uh, the budget of NHTSA. And so you have to say to yourself, are you going to have to spend all that extra money uh, for an agency that uh, overall, as Mr. Whitfield pointed out, that uh, safety has improved without this huge expense. So I think uh, that's obviously a concern. And lastly, in the few seconds I have remaining, I'd like to talk about Eddie Towns and I, uh, the congressman from New York, have a bill uh, that we think is important and that we compliment the chairman for allowing us to uh, uh, continue to have discussion on it. Our bill is H.R. 734, the Pedestrian Safety Enhancement Act. I look forward to working with Mr. Rush uh, to offer a revised version of this bill as an amendment to the Motor Vehicle Safety Act. Uh, our bill has 237 co-sponsors. We've worked closely with the National Federation of the Blind, the American Council of the Blind, the Alliance of Automobile Manufacturers, and the Association of International Automobile Manufacturers to arrive at what we believe is consensus language. All of these stakeholders believe strongly uh, that this bill will enhance the safety of America's roadways and help pedestrians themselves. So I thank Mr. Rush for his support and his uh, staff for willing to uh, work with us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> The uh, chair wants to thank Mr. Stearns for your hard work on this issue. There is general agreement that the growth of hybrid cars and electric cars is creating a safety risk for the blind and for other pedestrians as well. But finding the right solution has not been easy. We want to resolve the safety issue but not create a new problem of noise pollution. I understand that when this bill reaches full committee, you intend to have language that reflects agreement between you, Chairman Towns, as well as the National Federation of the Blind, the auto manufacturers, and NHTSA. And I look forward to working with you to support the language when it comes before the full committee. Uh, the chair now recognizes uh, the gentleman, for, gentleman lady from Ohio, Ms. Sutton, for two minutes. She's not here. Mr. Sarbanes, Mr. Stubach is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you and to Mr. Whitfield for holding this markup to consider legislation to strengthen the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Earlier today, as been mentioned, the Oversight Investigation Subcommittee held a hearing to serve as a progress report on where Toyota and the NHTSA are in terms of diagnosing and correcting sudden unattended acceleration events. At a hearing in February, we found that NHTSA lacks the personnel, resources, and authority to adequately investigate and address auto safety complaints. The Motor Vehicle Safety Act of 2010 will start to address many of the concerns raised in our two oversight hearings and the ongoing investigation into this topic. The bill before us creates a standard for brake overrides, accelerator control systems, and pedal placements. It mandates vehicle event data recorders that are accessible with commercially available equipment, a concern that was raised when it was discovered that Toyota had only one event data recorder in the United States when our subcommittee started its investigation. The bill further clarifies <coughs> that the electronic data recorder data is the property of the owner of the vehicle, a clarification that our subcommittee found is necessary to ensure that consumers have rightful access to the data. I look forward to work with my colleagues to clarify provision in the earlier draft of the bill to increase NHTSA's enforcement authority to seek civil penalties and force an immediate recall in the case of an imminent hazard before the Energy and Commerce Committee reports the bill to the full house. This proposed legislation is not just based on the Toyota hearings, but the powers, duties, and responsibility proposed for NHTSA are long overdue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back the balance of my time. The Chair uh, now recognizes Mr. Scalise for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I stated at the hearing on the Motor Vehicle Safety Act, I'm pleased that we're focusing on improving vehicle safety and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Automobiles are a vital, vital part of our daily lives, and they make up a critical sector of our nation's economy. Therefore, it is important that our subcommittee ensure that vehicles are safe for consumers to purchase and that NHTSA has the tools and resources it needs to promote highway safety and implement programs essential to its mission and goals. 
In 2009, we did see unfortunate incidents of unintended acceleration in vehicles, and the reasons behind these incidents are still unknown and being investigated by federal panels. It is important that we get to the bottom of these incidents and find out exactly what happened. However, I do not believe that Congress must pass sweeping legislation that mandates specific safety requirements on manufacturers, strengthens trial lawyers, and raises hundreds of millions of dollars in new taxes that will ultimately be passed on to the consumer, who's right now struggling during tough economic times. And let us not forget that we are currently experiencing the safest period in automobile history. NHTSA's report last year showed that 2009 had the lowest fatality rate on record. This is a testament to the work being done by NHTSA and the auto manufacturers and the steps they are taking to improve vehicle safety. Given the current safety benefits that consumers are experiencing, Congress must take its foot off the gas pedal with this legislation. We don't need to throw money at a problem for the sake of throwing more money at a federal agency with no link to improve safety, and it's not going to solve any problems. That is why I'm extremely concerned about doubling NHTSA's budget following the safest year on record in the automobile industry and while our country has a $1.5 trillion deficit. And to fill in some of those budget increases, the legislation places a vehicle safety user fee on manufacturers, which is another word for a massive tax increase that will raise the cost of buying a car on families and will automatically rise each year after it is enacted and will easily cost families more than $200 million in new taxes in just the first three years. Don't get me wrong, I understand the importance of examining vehicle safety and enacting the necessary improvements where needed, and it is important that we have a strong and effective NHTSA, but we must proceed with caution and find ways to do this in a responsible manner. But no evidence has been submitted that doubling this federal agency's budget will do anything to change safety outcomes. I look forward to debating the amendments that will be offered today. I hope that we can address the concerns that I've outlined as well as those of my colleagues. Thank you, and I yield back. The chair recognizes the gentlelady from California, Ms. Matsui, for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding today's markup. NHTSA is responsible for collecting consumer complaint data, investigating potential vehicle defects, and overseeing recalls of vehicles with safety defects, among the many other important motor safety operations. This is no easy feat, particularly at a time when consumers are more concerned than ever about the safety performance of their car. Nonetheless, this agency is back at the center of the car safety debate on how best to protect the public from vehicle defects and serious safety-related issues. Some believe that the agency's budget for addressing vehicle safety defects has been woefully inadequate given its important consumer safety mission. To that point, the agency only has 58 workers in its all-important enforcement division tasked with crash testing and vehicle safety enforcement as compared to 119 workers in the 1970s. The Motor Vehicle Safety Act of 2010 strengthens NHTSA's expertise in vehicle electronics and requires new safety standards, thus increasing transparency and auto safety. Additionally, the bill will provide much needed funding to NHTSA in order for the agency to continue its mission of vehicle safety. As we all know, technology in cars is ever-changing these days, and NHTSA must keep pace in its enforcement and all safety measures to properly ensure public safety moving forward. I look forward to working with my colleagues on this legislation, and thank you again, Mr. Chairman, for holding today's market, and I yield back the balance of my time. The Chair recognizes the gentleman from uh, Ohio, Mr. Lada, for two minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member. As the subcommittee considers the Motor Vehicle Safety Act of 2010, it is important that it reviews recent incidents involving motor vehicle safety and ensures that citizens are safe behind the wheel. I do have concerns that this legislation expands the government bureaucracy. As of late, the federal government appears to be in the business of regulating every industry, thereby hindering in economic growth and keeping hardworking Americans from good-paying jobs. My district, the 5th Congressional District, has had an average unemployment rate of 13.5 percent. I've heard the concerns of my constituents and businesses that the costs associated with this legislation will be passed along to consumers and that will likely cost jobs in complying with the new regulations. In addition to these concerns, as already stated by the ranking member, this legislation will, will authorize a doubling of NIFSA's budget. How will NIFSA use these funds to save lives? 
I fear that this legislation is the continuance of more hidden costs and tax increases on hardworking Americans and businesses that supply the jobs. Congress and the administration need to exercise serious fiscal restraint and stop excessive spending. The reason for fiscal restraint is not just for today's Americans, but also for our children and grandchildren. Mr. Chairman, I hope that the subcommittee comes to a bipartisan agreement on this legislation that ensures that jobs are protected, lives are saved, and that there are no unintended consequences. Thank you very much, and I yield back. The chair recognizes the gentlelady from Ohio, Ms. Sutton, for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you for holding today's markup. As the problems with unintended acceleration in Toyota vehicles have been have made apparent, NHTSA must have the resources to conduct in-depth investigations into new and complex electronic systems and vehicles. There are more technologies and advances on the way, including lighter materials that must be safe for consumers. I understand that we have more work to do on the Motor Vehicle Safety Act, and I plan to offer uh, some amendments at full committee to address some other important safety issues. At an earlier hearing in the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee uh, on Toyota's unintended acceleration problem, I addressed one of these important safety issues. Late last year, NHTSA published the Vehicle Safety Rulemaking and Research Priority Plan for 2009 through 2011. In this priority plan, NHTSA cites 2010 as the deadline for the release of the Notice of Proposed Rulemaking for stability control systems for commercial vehicles. However, NHTSA is now stating that they do not expect to publish these rules until in 2010. I'm working on an amendment to bring before the full committee so that this notice will be published in 2010 as their priority plan states. Last October, NHTSA's report on safety benefits of stability control systems for tractor semi-trailers found that the stability control systems can substantially reduce the number of annual heavy truck crashes. Specifically, according to NHTSA's report, electronic stability control technology deployed on five-axle tractor uh, semi-trailers can reduce 4,659 crashes, 5,909 injuries, and 126 deaths annually. Department of Transportation statistics indicate about two truck rollovers a day in the U.S. As we continue to craft the Motor Vehicle Safety Act to help NHTSA's mission to save lives, prevent injuries, reduce economic costs due to road traffic crashes, we must not allow unnecessary delays in the implementation of important technology beyond cas uh, passenger cars to go unaddressed. I yield back. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Nebraska, Mr. Terry, for two minutes. Uh, the chair recognizes now the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Murphy, for two minutes. Uh, the chair recognizes the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Space, for two minutes. Uh, in thanking you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Ranking Member, uh, I will waive opening statement. The Chair recognizes the gentleman from uh, Iowa, Mr. Brady, for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In the interest of time, I'll waive my opening statement. The Chair recognizes... Uh, are there any members who wish to be heard that have not been heard? That said, the chair now calls of the committee print of the Motor Vehicle Safety Act of 2010. The clerk will report the title of the committee print. Section 1, short title, page content A, short title. This act may be cited as the Motor Vehicle Safety Act of 2010. Without objection, the committee print will be considered as read and open to amendment at any point. Does any member seek recognition to offer an amendment to the, to the committee print before the subcommittee? Uh, the chair now recognizes the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Dr. Gingery, for uh, – does any member – I recognize Dr. Gingery to offer uh, an amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have an amendment to the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Can we get the number on that, Mr. Chairman? The number on the amendment. Is it 001? I 
I think it's authorization 001. Okay, we have it, Mr. Chair. Amendment to the committee print offered by Mr. Gingri. Page 26, beginning on line 10, strike 2010, and all that follows through line 13. The amendment has been distributed, and without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. Uh, the chair now recognizes Dr. Gingri for five minutes to explain this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I do plan on uh, offering and withdrawing this amendment in respect to the uh, agreement that was worked out between uh, the chairman of the overall committee and our ranking member as well as uh, 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 Mr. Whitfield and uh, Mr. Rush. Uh, the hopes that you, uh, Mr. Chairman and Chairman Waxman, will work with us on this issue before the legislation comes to the full committee the federal government continues to run an estimated 1.8 trillion budget deficit for this current fiscal year, 1.8 trillion dollars, all while maintaining our national debt currently at 12.6 trillion dollars. Simply put, we need to act prudently when the spending taxpayer dollars. During hearings that were held on NHTSA, both Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood and NHTSA Administrator David Strickland indicated that they have the resources necessary either at their disposal or available through contracting on an as-needed basis to accomplish their safety goals. In the committee print that we have before us today, the first year authorization of this legislation is $200 million. Uh, in the two following years of the authorization, the funding levels are $240 million and $280 million. In the fiscal year 2011 budget request submitted by President Obama, he only requested that NHTSA receive $132 million. Mr. Chairman, we need to get a handle on the out-of-control spending mentality that exists here in Congress. I believe one place we can begin is with this bill. This is precisely why I've offered the amendment. My amendment makes this bill a one-year authorization and provides $136.8 million available to NHTSA. This falls in line with uh, President Obama's budget request, and it also accounts for an additional $4 million that will establish the Center for Vehicle Electronics and Emerging Technologies to integrate NHTSA's expertise in vehicle, sa vehicle safety within electronic systems. Unfortunately, the underlying committee print before us increases the authorization level for NHTSA over a three-year period by close to $70 million in the first year, $100 million in the second year, and $150 million in the final year of this bill. Just last week, MSNBC reported that the United States has, for the first time since 1983, run a deficit for the month of April, the month when people pay their income taxes. For fiscal year 2010 alone, we have already incurred $802 billion in deficit spending. For the month of April, which includes tax day, as I said, deficit spending was $20.9 billion. Let's compare that to April of 2009. The federal government last April ran a $159 billion surplus for April. Clearly, this further validates the point that we need to rein in this ridiculous spending. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask unanimous consent to include this MSNBC article from May 12th in the record. Here are no objections, so order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Due to the budget woes facing the nation as articulated by this particular article, I believe that, given our current conditions, we need to demonstrate fiscal restraint for all areas of the federal government. There's no better place to start than NHTSA, particularly when there is little evidence to substantiate these increases in funding levels for the, for the agency. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I believe this amendment demonstrates the need to reevaluate the budget numbers associated with this bill. I look forward to working with you and Chairman Waxman on this issue as we move forward with this legislation in the full committee. And with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I do ask unanimous consent to withdraw uh, this amendment, and I'll uh, yield back the balance of my time. Hearing no objections, so ordered. So and I yield back then, Mr. Chairman, and thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Does any other member seek to offer an amendment to the committee print before the subcommittee? The chair recognizes the, chair recognizes the ranking member uh, to all, for the purpose of offering an amendment. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. And uh, I would like to ask unanimous consent that I be able to offer uh, three amendments in block and that I will take just a few minutes to discuss each one 
And I do this simply to raise the issues, and then it is my intention uh, to withdraw the amendment uh, as soon as I discuss them. Hearing no objections, uh, the gentleman will be allowed to offer three amendments in block. Thank you very much. The first one is optional 001. Oh, uh, oh, is it dis oh, disable 001, I'm sorry, disable 001. The second one is shall 001, and the third is EWR FOIA deletion. The, the clerk will report the amendments, unblock amendments. Amendment to the committee print offered by Mr. Whitfield. Page 9, line 9, strike that. And all that follows through line 14 and insert a period. Is this a function? Page 10 after line 14. I insert ask the unanim following. unanimous consent that uh, the reading of the amendment be dispensed with. And uh, I, I understand you all may have be having a little difficulty finding the um, last amendment. And it's referred to as R-002. Is this the first one? Okay. If you, if you all have found all those amendments and are passing them out, then uh, I would move with a dis that we dispense with the reading of all of them, and I'll just take a few minutes to go over them, Mr. Chairman. Hearing no objection, uh, the chair will recognize the gentleman for five minutes to explain uh, his uh, unblocked amendments. Well, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, the First Amendment, which is referred to as disabled, simply is an amendment that would allow individuals to turn off the recording feature on the government mandated black boxes or electronic data recorders required by this bill so long as turning off the recording does not impede vehicle safety systems. I think this amendment is important because despite the language that the recorded data belongs to the vehicle owner, and may not be retrieved without the owner's consent or a court authorization, this legislation does permit government officials ac to access the black box data anytime for the purpose of improving motor vehicle safety so long as personally identifiable, identifiable information is redacted. So as we go forward, one question that I would ask, with this information, would, it, would this particular information be subject uh, to a court uh, order or a court subpoena. So that is one of the reasons w I'm offering this amendment. And then on the second amendment, uh, which I refer to as uh, protection of confidential business information, this amendment requires the Secretary of Transportation to establish no later than two years after enactment categories of information that should be withheld in keeping with current non-disclosure standards in the Freedom of Information Act, including confidential business information. Section 201B provides that the agency shall issue regulations establishing categories of information that must be made available to the public. Now that's in the committee print, but it only provides that the Secretary may establish categories of information that may be withheld from public disclosure. Uh, so the committee print does not require the secretary to make that determination. So I think this whole issue of protecting trade secrets uh, is very important. And, the, uh, and that's really what this amendment is all about, uh, protecting that business information, that's proprietary information to be certain that that is done. And so that's the second amendment, and as I said, I raise these uh, simply as we move forward. Uh, these are two or three areas that uh, I would like to engage in further discussion with the majority uh, about. Uh, the third amendment uh, relates to uh, 
This amendment strikes subsection D and E of section 201 of the committee print. Section D excludes certain information, most notably production information regarding passenger motor vehicles from non-disclosure protections under the Freedom of Information Act. So if information submitted to the government is confidential and its release would competitively harm the submitter, FOIA Exemption 4 protects the information pu from public disclosure, and nothing in FOIA authorizes an agency to create a category of information that is exempt from the exemption. So I think the committee print, as written, does create a problem also in this area. So those are the three areas that I simply wanted to raise, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate your allowing me to do it in block, and I look forward to working with you and the committee staff as we move forward on this legislation, and I'll withdraw all three of those amendments. Uh, the, the Chair, thanks to the gentleman. Does any other member seek recognition to speak on these unblocked amendments? Mr. Chairman. Chairman. The Chair recognizes, uh, for what purpose is the gentleman from? Uh, to offer an, uh, two amendments on block with the unanimous consent. Okay. <clears throat> the, the Chair uh, recognizes uh, Mr. Uh, the gentleman from Florida, uh, for the purpose of offering an amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, by unanimous consent, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to offer these two amendments. Uh, and the one is called LED001, and the other one is Database001. I'll speak briefly on each of these. Um, the, first, the first one um, is, is basically giving the Secretary of NHTSA more power. Well, the chair, excuse me. Well, let the clerk, let the sure. clerck report yeah. the amendments. And uh, am I saying you're going to withdraw the amendments? I, I think that, that my argument might be so perspicacious that you might just want to accept them before I withdraw. But I'll let you make that decision. <laughs> the clerk will report the amendments. Amendment to the committee print offered by Mr. Stearns, page 12, strike lines 13 through 18. Insert at the end of Title One. The following, section 109, lead time, lead time. Uh, I have unanimous consent to dispense with the reading of the bill. Okay, the, the amendment has been distributed without objection. The amendment will be, uh, we will proceed without reading the amendment. Uh, the gentleman from Florida is recognized for five minutes to Thank explain you, Mr. the Chairman. Bill. For some unknown reason, the bill currently provides the Secretary with discretion to provide lead time and phase-in periods for the event data recorders standard, but not for any other standards in Title I. So what I simply try to do with this amendment is to say that uh, let's have a new section providing manufacturers adequate time and reasonable phase-in periods to comply with new vehicle safety standards to ensure uh, pursuant to Title I. Uh, specifically, Specifically, it would require each standard prescribed under Title I to establish a phase-in period for compliance that's determined by the Secretary and require full compliance with the standard no later than five years. So, Mr. Chairman, basically I give the Secretary uh, more ability so that he can uh, establish a phase-in period. Uh, I think that would help the manufacturers in some of the difficult issues in which uh, they can't comply with it in the whether one year or two years it's uh, presently in the standard. So I ask you and your staff to consider the idea of, of uh, adopting that amendment. Uh, the second amendment uh, is dealing with uh, NHTSA to improve its uh, searchable database of public information. Um, the amendment would require NHTSA to notify users of the database of the information that they have uh, to say, is this accurate? Is this complete? Uh, so if a person um, gives this information to NHTSA, uh, the information could be uh, determined whether it's accurate or complete. Uh, personal information about the submitter of the information would not be disclosed by NHTSA uh, to the manufacturer uh, without the consent of the individual. But lots of times people make complaints about automobiles and the manufacturer can show that it's not a valid complaint. So without providing any personal information about the uh, individual makes a complaint, the manufacturer has an opportunity to uh, ensure that it's accurate and completely understands it. Finally, uh, it must, uh, NHTSA must contact the relevant 
auto manufacturer when a complaint is submitted to the data about, database about one of their vehicles and allow the manufacturer simply an opportunity to respond publicly to the complaint. So this allows the manufacturer to get involved to, to decide whether this is a legitimate complaint or not. At the same time, it prevents the disclosure of the information, uh, personal information about the person who's making the complaint. So I think it ensures the public is better informed uh, about the information they provide, and second, informs the manufacturer of potential problems. So I think these two amendments are what I'm offering, Mr. Chairman. I'd be simply ask you maybe uh, if that you and your staff would consider them as part of the bill before it goes to the uh, full House, or what's your feeling on this uh, before I uh, decide ultimately what to do? Well, Mr. Stearns, uh, on, on behalf of your uh, ranking member and, uh, and uh, Mr. Barton, he had indicated at the beginning of this uh, uh, markup that uh, all uh, amendments would be withdrawn. Uh, and that's the spirit in which we uh, have been operating, and that's the spirit in which I would uh, ask the committee to, subcommittee, to continue to operate uh, on. So uh, I would request that you honor the commitment that's been made by Go the no further, Mr. Chairman. I uh, ask unanimous consent uh, to withdraw my two amendments on would, block. Would the gentleman yield? I'd be glad to yield to the But just before he withdraws, to show good faith, uh, Chairman Rush, I... I suggested to uh, Congressman Stearns that he offer his amendments to, to, to feel your temperature, just to <laughs> see how you felt about them. There was some chance that we thought you might consider them worthy enough to be accepted. But we certainly would encourage Congressman Stearns to withdraw if that's the chairman's wish. Yeah, the chairman has a fever, so. Uh, <laughs> 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 so uh, the uh, chair uh, accepts the yeah the um, chairman uh, the clarion call withdrawal. has been unanimous consent to withdrawal. Yes. Okay, so the member is withdrawn. Does any other uh, member have a uh, seek recognition to offer an amendment to the committee print before the subcommittee? Is there any other member, uh, Mr. Scalise? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment at the desk to strike Section 301 of the bill. And uh, I don't know if we need to read that or I don't know. Clerk, we'll report the amendment. Amendment to the committee print offered by Mr. Scalise. Strike Section 301 and redesignate the succeeding sections and conform the table of contents accordingly. Uh, the amendment has been distributed without objection. The amendment will be considered as read. Uh, the gentleman is recognized for five minutes to explain this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The amendment that I brought forward strikes the tax that's in this bill. If you, if you look at the, the tiered tax that starts uh, next year and then would continue to grow, it would, in the first year, according to uh, records based on 2009 sales, which was uh, probably one of the worst years uh, in a long time in terms of uh, vehicle sales, that would be over $31 million for year one alone. But if you go to the third year and you actually take normal car sales, in a normal, normal year, uh, usually new cars, uh, you get about 15 million new cars sold a year. Uh, so at $10, $9 in the case of year three and growing every year automatically, you're talking about a, a $150 million a year tax on the purchase of new vehicles. And I think clearly when you look at what's happened in the economy, uh, families out there are struggling. Families are cutting back. Uh, the last thing that families want to see is another $150 million a year in new taxes to buy a car. Uh, we ought to be encouraging people to go out and, and spend money in the, in, in the economy to create jobs. Uh, the last thing we need to do is to be raising taxes. And especially when you're talking about an industry like the car industry that's been struggling the last few years, we want them to get back up on their feet. Now, I was against the bailout of car companies, but if you look at GM alone, GM still owes the American taxpayers over $40 billion, most of that in stock, in escrow. And how are they going to be able to pay that money back if you sock them with another multi-million dollar tax? In this case, $150 million by year three alone, and it grows every year. 
This isn't a tax that's capped. Every single year it grows with the cost of living. Uh, it literally starts at $3 per car in year one, goes to 6 and then goes to 9 uh, You're talking about a dramatically escalating tax that by year three, would, by estimates of, of normal year car sales, would be over $150 million a year. And to do what? To double the size of this agency. Uh, now, if you look at what American families are doing right now, they're cutting back. They're tightening their belts. If you look at states all across the country, they're cutting back because times are tough. Seems like the federal government's the only place uh, where they think double-digit increases in growth of size of departments is, is something that's acceptable in a tough year. Uh, we should be cutting back the size of this federal government, not doubling agencies based on partially based on taxes that would yield about $150 million on families every single year. And this is a tax that will be directly passed on because, like I said, these car companies are already struggling. Chrysler owes nearly $7 billion to the taxpayer. I mean, what are we trying to do to these people? I think, I think we've got to look at this, and I understand that there are negotiations going on, and, and out of respect for that, I will work in good faith with the chairman to try to see if this can be included in the final product uh, but we've got to go back and look at uh, removing Section 301, uh, a $150 million a year tax to double an agency's budget is the last thing we need to be doing. Uh, so I will make unanimous consent request to withdraw the amendment, but in hopes that it gets included in. And if not, this, this will obviously come back up again uh, when, we, when we have the full committee hearing. With that, I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Uh, does any other member seek a recognition or to speak on the amendment? Uh, does any other member uh, seek recognition to offer an amendment to the committee print before the subcommittee? Mr. Uh, Chairman? Uh, the chair recognizes the ranking member. I, I just asked to strike the requisite number of words. The chair, uh, the, sub, the ranking member is recognized for five minutes. All right, and I won't take five minutes. Um, I've been informed that the House is not going to be in session tomorrow, so when we finish this business in our last series of votes, we can head to the airport. So I hope that we can conclude this business expeditiously. That's my first announcement. <laughs> <clears throat> my second announcement is that the, the, the draft before us, Mr. Chairman, does not have a Title II. That has been withdrawn from the draft that was circulated. Uh, Republicans have a number of, of uh, concerns about the original elements in Title II which deal with the civil penalties and um, the imminent hazard language and uh, we will have several uh, suggestions to the majority about that title if and when the majority decides to move forward and with that I simply will uh, say uh, we look forward to working to negotiate a good faith compromise and, and yield back. Sure. Thanks to the gentleman both for his comments and also for his announcement. <laughs> Uh, is there any other member seeking recognition to offer an amendment to the committee print before the subcommittee? Mr. Braley, do you have an amendment? Not in this time. All right. Seeing no other members uh, seeking to offer an amendment to the committee print, the question is now on the amendment offered uh, by Mr. Waxman. Question now on the committee print. All members in favor of uh, the committee print uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, the ayes have it, and the, and the committee print is adopted. Uh, that said, the subcommittee now stands adjourned. Good job. Okay, well, got it out.